What is up, Only Playbook fans? We are back for another episode. Man, this might be the best episode and the biggest episode we've recorded because it is officially Super Bowl week. We have, what, four, five days till Super Bowl 56? Mm -hmm. This is episode 44. I'm Sweet Car. I got Shashot, Shovit. Guys, happy Super Bowl week. Yeah, happy Super Bowl week. We are finally here. Man, I can't wait. Can't wait for Sunday. Dude, this is so sad in so many ways. It is. Because it's like, what, I have to find something else that's not like work-related or school-related that's like important in my life, and there is nothing. Winter Olympics? No. No. I'm hard, a hard pass. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to watch it while it's like, you know, everybody's around the screen and cheering on for USA, but not a big fan of like, you know, like underground USA fans. Like, yeah. Not really. Nothing compares to the Super Bowl. No. Yeah, and I'm way more of a Summer Olympics guy than a Winter Olympics yeah. guy. Just preference to sports, yeah, right? Yeah, because you can actually play Summer Olympics yeah. outside sometimes. Yeah. Winter Olympics. You have to like go to specific places to play those sports. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, nonetheless, who cares about the Olympics? Because the Super Bowl is happening this Sunday. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals and the LA Rams meeting up. Basically a home game for the Rams in SoFi Stadium. Obviously a lot to unpack there. Um, this is the last episode of the year. As far as... Psych. God, dude. <laughs> totally fell for that. No, hell no. Super Bowl is going to end the season, obviously. But we expect to put out a lot more content. Offseason football is going to be very important. Obviously, you know, a lot of implications into fantasy football heading into next season. We've seen so many times rookie running backs, rookie receivers, rookie quarterbacks go early and make immediate impact. So uh, there's going to be a lot to talk about, obviously. But in terms of football content action... This is going to be the last game of the season. So, yeah, it's bittersweet. But uh, I was telling you guys before we started recording, I'm so excited about this game because I have absolutely no idea what the hell is going to happen. Every day, my mind changes. Every minute I think about the game, I think two different things leads me to a different direction. Dude, it's been a theme of this playoffs, yeah. right? It's not even just this game. For me, at least, it's just been – I've been so wrong so many times in this playoffs that it's just never been like this. There's never been – a no number one or a no number two in the Super Bowl in like years and decades, right? So it's like, how do we, who predicted this to happen? Like literally, we even put out a tweet, you know, like a month ago saying, hey, if there's anybody out there that's choosing the Rams or the Bengals in the Super Bowl, uh, tweet to us. Nobody did. Yep. Because nobody chose them. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, again, I think that just, like you said, makes for such a great game for a neutral fan who's not a fan of either of the teams because, again, we want to see good football. As football fans, we like to see you know teams in the Super Bowl that maybe haven't been there before, brand-new opportunity, et cetera. So there's so many storylines that we'll unpack. Obviously, if you've enjoyed our content thus far this season, thank you so much for all the support. We're everywhere, social media, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Twitter at Only Playbook, Instagram and TikTok at The Only Playbook, every listening podcast platform you can think of, Anchor, Spotify, Google, uh, Apple, um, and then we have a YouTube channel. Obviously, if you're watching, you're watching on the YouTube channel at The Only Playbook. So uh, like, subscribe, comment. Everything that you do helps spread the word about this podcast to other people that may enjoy it as well. So uh, thank you so much for everything and all of the support we've received so far. Um, let's do what we do best and dissect this Super Bowl. The Cincinnati Bengals, Cool Joe Burrow and crew are going to be traveling, playing basically a road game for the Super Bowl, which, you know, typically that should be the case for both teams, but in this instance, it's not. They're traving to LA to take on the Rams in Super Bowl 56 at SoFi Stadium. Rams at home, basically, favored by four and a half points over under 48 and a half. God, I don't even know where to start. Somebody kick us up. Yeah, I mean, this is such an exciting game, and I'm going to start with the betting line at 4.5 and, and why that may be the case. I mean, basically, the Rams have a home field advantage. They get to play in their stadium at the Super Bowl. I mean, what more can you start off with as far as like being able to uh, come up hot in that game? Now, 4.5, um, I like I like the Bengals there. You know what? I, I, I really don't think that... I don't think that the game will be a... If, if the Rams are going to win... Um, I think it's going to be a close game. It's going to happen to. It's going to need to be a field goal. Um, I don't. If if the Bengals win, it's going to have to be like they win by a lot of points. You know what I mean? I just don't see the Bengals make, keeping it competitive and keeping it close. And 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 it's it's going to be one of those like Bengals win outright or or uh for, or the Rams win by three points. And uh, there's lots to look at in this game. Um, lots of betting things to look at. But uh, in, in terms of uh, another bet that I like in this game is uh, is if you have the uh, Bengals winning, then Joe Burrow needs to get the MVP. 
I don't see anyone else win the MVP if Joe Burrow and the Bengals win. I like I like that as a piggyback bet for sure. If you are betting on the Bengals to win the Super Bowl, it would be foolish to not also throw a bet on the MVP. Yeah. And you're getting Joe Burrow, who is the most likely MVP of that team should they win. And I think he's like plus 225 or something, right? right? right. Obviously, because I think the line favors the Rams, so the, the MVP will go on the Rams side if they win. Uh, but like you said, if you're taking the Bengals with the bet and you're confident or you think that they're going to win and you're going to root for them, it would be foolish not to sprinkle a bet on Joe Burrow. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, that's what I've got. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah so that's... Nice little betting segment yeah. there. Um, but back to like what happens on the field outside of what the fans can do about it. Um, this is a very interesting Super Bowl, to say the least. This is the fourth instant in Super Bowl history when opposing quarterbacks wear the same jersey. You know? Wow. Whoa. No one's no one's ever like in, it's only happened four times in the history of football. So it's really crazy. Two number nines are going back at it. The last time this happened was Roger Staubach and Brad uh, Terry Bradshaw. Twice. Damn. So, number 12s? Yeah. Number yeah. 12s. And then it happened with Staubach and Greasy also. Number 12s. So, so it's only been 12s. <laughs> and Tom Brady's been a bunch of 12s like every year for the last two decades. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. No, Aaron Rodgers or Tom, and Tom Brady. Isn't that crazy? Wow. That's crazy. That's a sad story. Yeah, I've that is so of. sad. Holy crap. Tom Brady, please don't retire. Come back. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff in this game. Um. You know, as far as all the props that you mentioned, there's so many of those that, yeah. you know, historically when it comes to Super Bowls, we got to figure out who, what kind of Gatorade color it's going to be. We got to figure out the coin toss. Um, so yeah, this this one this one's setting up to be crazy in every aspect of the game. Not just you know sometimes like when Tom Brady's playing, the focus is all on Tom Brady, right? Even though it's Joe Burrow, and even though it's uh, uh, Matthew Stafford, I feel like as much as the focus is on Burrow off the field, like right now, every, everybody all everybody talks about is Joe Burrow, right? But the good thing about the Cincinnati Bengals is that's never been their Achilles heel where Burrow has to take all this on his shoulders and make the make it happen. Cincinnati's been playing one of the most like united form of football I have ever seen, especially this playoffs, right? Like nothing has happened where Joe Burrow has to make something happen or like Joe Burrow has to do this. It hasn't been like that. Their defense has stepped up hardcore. Their receivers are all on point. Um, you know, what more and even Joe Mixon, even though his yards per carry are trash as of late. Uh, he's still getting in the end zone when needed. And, you know, and, and McPherson, can't forget about McPherson. It's like a unit. It's a solid unit. And what, how do you beat a team that's just paid their way into a Super Bowl is to have a cohesive unit that's on the same page. And the Bengals are that. Yeah, this, this, the, the way that this plays out in my head is the Bengals are the story, right? They are the storybook. They are the team that a movie could be made of in yeah. two decades, right? So they, like you said, and it's all because of that cohesion. You're looking at a team that came into the season virtually in a rebuild year. Mm -hmm. Rebuild year, your quarterback's coming off an ACL tear. Uh, you know you have an atrocious offensive line, so there was so much about the Bengals. I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think of what Vegas had their preseason over-under at for wins. Like, I want to say it wasn't higher than 7.5 yeah, or something. No Might have been lower, actually. But yeah. so, so to come into a rebuild year, have a quarterback who basically is a rookie, hasn't proven enough in the NFL yet, although he had a great track record in college and high school, but that, does, that translates to the NFL maybe less than 1% of the time, right? So there were so many reasons that the Bengals should not be here. So mm -hmm. I think carrying that momentum all through, Throughout the entire season, it has never once wavered. Yes, they've had you know games where they've lost or played bad, but all of that has led to them being in the grandest stage possible in a year where I don't think people even predicted them to make the playoffs. So, um, like you said, the Rams, on the other hand, completely different story. They literally traded for Matthew Stafford. They gave up pretty much all their draft picks for the next several years to get this guy because they knew Jared Goff wasn't the answer. And they made the Super Bowl with Jared Goff, so they felt like they were basically a quarterback away from winning it all, right? And this is how it played out. They got that quarterback that they thought was going to be the reason they would win it all. They're back in the big dance like they've been before, but they were a quarterback away, and now they believe Matthew Stafford's the guy. So for them, it's they've literally, like you said, paid. They, they got Von Miller, right? They got OBJ. And, you know, even guys like Jalen Ramsey, they traded for Jalen Ramsey. He wasn't always a Ram. So they basically star loaded and star studded like really, really key spots positions, for their uh, yeah. positions. Mm -hmm. And everything else is just kind of, you know, in there and yeah. like doing enough and just kind of getting by. But, but I will say the Rams that we saw in the regular season where, you know, they weren't beating good teams at a time and then they got hot towards the end of the year. It, this seems like a different football team. I think they've kind of taken the next step in terms of uh, consistency. Matthew Stafford, to me, it seems like he's at least taken the next step here. And the running game with Cam Akers has been huge. And 
every single week we've been saying, okay, this week they'll finally double team Cooper Cup. Well, it fucking does not matter. No. So this is just an insane matchup in every facet, quarterback versus quarterback, Ramsey versus uh, Jamar Chase, right? You have OBJ, the storyline there. You have two kickers who are both pro bowlers. And like there's, you have two really young coaches that came from the same coaching tree. Yeah. Like there's yeah. so many story, number two, number one draft picks, both wearing number nine. Again, the, this, the game writes its own script. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about this game. Um, but for me, like I told you guys, I was back and forth pretty much every single time I thought about what was going to happen in this game. Chauvin, I'm with you. If we're talking about points from a four and a half point perspective, I think this game stays inside a touchdown. Like I think, I think it could be a touchdown game. So there's a chance that line loses, mm-hmm. but I think it's going to be a one score game, no matter who wins the football game. So for that reason, I think four and a half on the Bengals side is a lot of points to take. So I would absolutely ride that if I was taking a side. I do also believe that the under is going to come in. Um, I, I know that these teams can put up a ton of points in a hurry, but the way I'm reading the script of this game is this is going to be less like like the Bills Chiefs game where it's like you know the, it, every play is a touchdown, but more so it's going to be like yes the offense is going to have no problem really moving the ball. It's just going to be about longer sustained drives which take up more time. Which again, all it takes are, is one or two drives that don't become touchdowns that become field goals, and the under can hit. So I th- I think Bengals and under is what I'm leaning towards. But there are a lot of different random prop bets that I, I do like, um, and, and it kind of coincides with how I think this game's going to play out, right? If I'm expecting, there gonna, there's going to be opportunities to move the ball, which means I think both teams are going to have pretty easy chances at getting to the other side of the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, these bo- Both of these kickers have insanely long legs, right? McPherson's longest of the season, 58 yards. Matt Gay's longest of the season, 55 yards. So they have no problem deploying their kicker for really, really long kicks. They're playing indoors. Weather is absolutely not a factor. So for all of those reasons, the over-under for total field goals in the game is sitting at three and a half. And I think there's a really, really good chance we see four field goals this game. Whether all four field goals go in, that remains to be seen. But when you're taking a bet, you're taking the bet because, you know, are you are you envisioning it coming to fruition? And for me, if four kicks are going to be kicked, and I know that before the game, or like if somebody were to say, hey, they're going to kick the ball four times, I can't tell you if they're going to make it, I would take the bet 10 out of 10 times. So for that reason, I think over three and a half is a great bet. I saw it at like plus 110, so you're getting it at plus money even. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with that coincides to the longest field goal of the game, they have at 47 and a half, which again, knowing these two kickers' longest kicks of the season and knowing that it's indoors and knowing that it's the Super Bowl and it's two offenses that love taking fucking risks, I don't think that, you know, it's not unlikely that there's end of the half and there's a 58 yarder on deck and they're, they're not, they're going to send their kicker out there to attempt that. So, um, for all those reasons, I like a lot of kicker props, which is not, you know, typical of what I see, but there's nothing else that really stands out to me because again, the theme is every day I think about this game, I think something different is going to happen. But the one thing that I've seen that I think is going to stay in unison is going to be kicking the football. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good that's a good bet. Um, their defensive, both teams' defensive has has definitely stepped up in the playoffs as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not allowing a lot of points. Um, so you may very well see those kicking games, and uh, as long as they don't, you know, teams don't get into the red zone, what are they what are they gonna do? They're gonna yeah. kick the ball, and I don't see a lot of turnovers happening unless Matthew Stafford, um, pulls you know old school Matthew Stafford and starts doing some. Matthew La- Stafford things. Matthew yeah. Stafford things. And then you'll, you'll see. <laughs> let's hope that, I mean, again, I don't know what the hell is going to happen in this game, but let's hope that that, that uh, storyline yeah. is going to be thrown to to, to bed because yeah. Stafford has a crazy good game yeah. in the big, biggest game of you his know, life. You remember when we played that card game where I bought a pack, yeah. pack of cards? There was only one card there. The other ones were stickers. And the only card there was Matthew Stafford. Wow. If you guys remember that. I don't remember that, but that's yeah. insane. Matthew Stafford was the only card. That's, that's another storybook for this game. How the <laughs> f- what are the chances? Dude, that's... I All see right. it. I was, I was like re- re- uh, renovating my room and everything. And mm-hmm. I was like, um, I saw that pack. And I was like, huh, let's see who was in there. And like, oh, not... Fairbairn, not in the playoffs. And, and then the only real card there was Matthew Stafford. Stafford. And I was like, hmm, this yeah. is a little weird. Is there some value in that now? Maybe? I have no idea. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have uh, three little questions to ask you guys. Yeah, uh, it's not an official it. game or anything, but it's all related to what we've been talking about. Um, Matthew Stafford is the fourth QB over the last 40 seasons to start a Super Bowl in their first season with the team. Whew. Can you game, Tom can Brady. You name the other three players? Tom Brady last year? Yeah, that's, okay. that's a that's a gimme one. Yeah, is it Tom Brady two years? Just Tom Brady one? Just a, just one year? Just one year? Yeah. yeah. And then the other two? First year with first like, year quarterbacks with a new team to start in the Super Bowl. It, are any of these so old that I we probably wouldn't? no? They're both in our lifetime. Okay. 
But they're but two of okay. Here's a good hint. Two of the least likely that for you guys to remember who they are. Least likely. Damn. But they're but you'll remember them. Um, first year quarterbacks. Hold on, I'm trying to think of first year. First year. I mean, could you count Nick Foles? No. No. No, he wasn't. Ro- do rookie quarterbacks count? No, it's just first year on a new team. Oh, new team. Okay, yeah. okay. First year on a new team. Man, holy shit. This is going to... Uh, Peyton Manning? No. Damn. Fuck. They did, I think it's the second year we're done, right? Yeah. Maybe. Um, okay, here's another hint. Yeah. This one this one should do it. Both of these last names start with a D. Dilfer? Yes. Trent, Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer. Jake DeLome. Yes. Let's go! <laughs> Daylight come. Well done. You got a DeLome. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, uh, yeah, you know what? We'll just continue, and then we'll, I'll come with the other things randomly All right. throughout the thing. Yeah, um, I, I had seen an interesting stat. We talked. I mean, we talk a lot this whole season, and obviously as Vikings fans, and obviously as you know Steelers fans, and how we have our own biases about our teams. And um, we talked a lot about how this league is evolving, becoming more offensive, et cetera. Right. So there was a tweet that this kid had put out. Who I, he actually works for PFF. Um, he there's over since 2011 teams to make the Super Bowl. There's been 22 total teams since 2011 that have made the Super Bowl, right? Um, 19 of the 22 teams ranked top 10 in offense in the season. 19 of the 22 teams were a top 10 offense mm-hmm. in the season. That yeah. that makes so much sense to me. What happened to the other three teams? That's what I'm. Yeah, they're wondering. probably it's probably the it's probably the Denver it's the Broncos from the Peyton Manning. So top 10 defense. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it's it, yeah it's it's not the top 10, not top 10, not probably 10. top one defense, top right? One, yeah. That yeah. The, the only way a defense is going to win is if they are the best defense. Not you're you're not going to be a borderline top 10 defense and have an average offense and have no. a chance to win. No. No, no, your defense has to be the reason you win, and for that to happen, you have to be pretty much elite. So it, I think it was Seattle. Whenever they beat Denver, it was Denver. Whenever they beat. Uh, Cam Newton and the Panthers, Panthers, and there was one other one I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the it was the t- Trent Dilfer and the the Ravens because it was all fucking Ravens defense, Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. So yeah, those I think were the three. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean for for you to be in the Super Bowl, you got to have either really good offense, yeah, and an average defense. What about or what about what about average offense, average defense, and I'd, really good special teams? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's a secret behind the Patriots hey, that, this whole time? Devin Hester and the Bears the year that they uh, played, what, the Peyton Colts? Manning and the Colts? Yeah. But that they, initial kickoff, I know their defense was really good too, yeah. but it was defense and special teams, right? It wasn't their offense. So, yeah, they are, there, are te- there are teams that are trying to make shift and try different ways to do it. And, yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting. Like, that's cool for you, but it's harder to become the anomaly than to become, like, you know, ni- if 19 of the 22 teams have a top 10 offense, that literally tells me let's get a top 10 offense because that puts us in the best position to to make the Super Bowl, right? To, to, to get into the big dance. And so um, I just think that's really interesting with how all of these coaching coaching hires are all younger guys who are all up and coming, who are more offensive minded, et cetera, getting rid of like old guys who have 1995 mentalities yeah. and et cetera. All of these numbers point to the fact that over the last decade, offense is trumping they're, defense. They're literally just learning what Madden players have known their yeah. whole lives. Oh. <laughs> It, it, dude, it, it's it feels like something where I'm teaching my parents something that yeah. like they're having a really hard time grasping because right. they're from a different generation, but we're tr- conveying that from like a football perspective, and it and it's sad because obviously like and I'm gonna use Zimmer just because he's he's the uh the the example that comes to mind, but Zimmer is a football genius, right? Like right. he's a there's a reason he's in the NFL as a head coach, whatever, all of his success. So it's crazy to me that somebody who is in the game, like in the heart of the game, cannot come to a realization that at some point, if you're doing the same thing year after year after year after year, and it's consistently working, at some point it's gonna stop working. At some point, the other team, the other side has to adjust, otherwise you're just successful forever. That's not realistic. The whole, all of life is about adjustments and changes, right? And so for him to never once try to adapt to a new age, I mean, it just shows that the, like, it's like technology, like it's, it, it's leaving him in the dust and it's moving on without him. Yeah. Hence he got fired, you know? So like, it's yeah. just, it's just a new age of football and it's exciting to see more t- people. I would assume love to see offenses than yeah. high powered defenses. It just makes for a better overall watch. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's, it's that last of the bill Parcells effect. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's like, you know, Bill Parcells was such a big name yep. that every coach would bend over backwards for what Bill Parcells was doing because it was working, right? Yep. And Zimmer has that going on mentally yeah. throughout this whole time. He's like, Bill Parcells would have done this. Bill Parcells doesn't care about good offense, yeah. right? So it's like that had to end at some point, right? Because Bill Parcells is not in the NFL anymore. Yep. It's just that's all he knows. And if you're not going to adjust with, and you're going to choose to just know that, then you got to go. And yeah. that's what happened. And now we've 
made one of the biggest changes from multiple different areas I've ever seen any team any team ever do. Yeah. Right? We have a head coach from West Coast. We have, yeah. we have a GM from New York. We yeah. have like, you know, it's just like yeah. they're reaching everywhere for the best talent. It's not about cohesion at this no, point. No. It's about getting all the best pieces together and then letting them unite. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is the person that's responsible for cohesion, because when you're hiring all these people, you can't you can't hire thinking of cohesion because then you might take somebody who is less qualified just because you think they mesh better with this guy. In some senses, maybe that works. But I like the fact that we started with a guy who is all about cohesion in the GM, right? And he's all about cohesion in a very unorthodox way. It's like he's coming from a background of like straight numbers, et cetera, and stuff. So he's not looking at like you're Bill Parcells, you're Mike Zimmer, you guys yeah. used to coach together. So you guys are probably buddies. So like, yeah, let's, let's put you two together. No, Hey, you've been really successful at what you do and you have a niche. Hey, you're really successful at what you do and what you have a niche. Let's, I, I'm the guy that's going to figure out how to make this cohesiveness work, but I'm getting the best of what I think is in both worlds. So um, I know we went off on a tangent there about this, regardless to the Super Bowl, but yeah, nonetheless, this is exciting because both of these teams are new age offensive minded football teams, and that's they're both in the Super Bowl. And um, I don't know, guys. I, I mean, you know, from from like a, just a supporting standpoint, I have been so torn about who the hell to root for in this game. Yeah, I'm just I just want a good game, honestly. Like I, I don't really care. I, I think I think one side's gonna win. I think that's the Bengals that's side. How, that's how sports work. That's how sports yeah, work. One side but, wins. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> if it's a close game and the Rams win, I mean, I, that's all I care for. Uh, yeah. Just just a good good from, game. From a story standpoint, I do want the Bengals to win. Yeah. But from a fan whose teams just just all that I know is pain, I kind of want the Bengals to experience more pain before you get this glory. You know, like I want them to see what it's like to have to work yeah. with years of struggle to get to somewhere. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the part that the Rams are going through, right? The Rams are, are, you know, they're they're trying to do something because it hasn't worked before. Whereas the Bengals, this is like their first rodeo and it's working, right? So it's like from from a fan, from a Joe Burrow fan perspective, yeah, dude, just he's a winner, right? Like seven straight uh Playoff slash, you know, uh, championships, tournament yeah. wins, yep. and that's something to root for because he's the man. And then you look at Matthew Stafford, who's just struggled year after year. When it comes to playoffs, he crumbles, and now he's put into the position to finally win. So it's like, damn, like who should win? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> if if the Rams don't end up winning, I think that that that's it for them. Yes, I, like oh, next definitely. year they're not coming back. They are screwed. They're not. Yeah, with all the draft picks that they've <laughs> given up. Yeah, the, at least the Bengals, even if they go through some pain, like yeah. they'll come back next year and they'll Absolutely. still have a legitimate. Nothing's chance. gonna change. I, I I read something the other day where none of the big names in the Bengals are going anywhere. Maybe besides Tyler Boyd, which <laughs> yeah, which is expen- he's, he's expendable he's at this case. point. He's very expendable. Yeah, they have a number one and number two, so finding a number three is pretty easy. Um, but you're right. Like the reason I'm torn is exactly that. Like. In a way, I would love to see Matthew Stafford get a Super Bowl. You know, as much as as much as I like was not a big Matthew Stafford fan because he played for Detroit. As much as you know, like he's numerous times with Detroit, like not played well, choked, uh, all that stuff. It 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 is like from a personality perspective, he's a great guy, right? There's no reason to not like Matthew Stafford outside of the fact that maybe he's not done what you want him to do on the football field for your fantasy team, for your betting, for your favorite team, whatever. But with that being said, I think like the OBJ storyline is very interesting. Like, did you guys see the interview where Jarvis Landry hopped on yeah, that conference trying. call? Like he didn't have to do that. Yeah. You know, like that that's the little things that like I'm an absolute sucker for. Right. So I'm like, dude, fuck yeah. Like that probably meant the world to OBJ because he wasn't expecting that. No. And he literally in, like had to like just go through some of the stupidest shit with the Cleveland Browns. People thinking like he was the reason like he's right. washed and like that entire journey to finally get here and now have a chance in the promised land. Like, fuck yeah. I want that dude to succeed. I want him to have a great game. So, uh, for that reason, obviously like I love Von Miller, obviously it's impossible not to root for Aaron Donald to like succeed. He's a, like, like there's nobody, there's he, nobody he, that I know that dislikes may, Aaron Donald. He may be the best player of all time, like, but he doesn't have a Super Bowl win. Right. And he's probably the most humble dude, right? Like he's a big giant. The dude, He's a freak of nature, I, I, and he's probably like a teddy bear. Has he ever said one bad word that you've heard? Like, no. So, like, it's so easy to root for that guy. Yeah. And, yeah. like, he does all of the right things. He's a tremendous football player. Those kind of people you want to succeed. So the the, the Rams have all of these storylines. But, again, <laughs> the Bengals, it's just Joe Burrow to me. Like, Joe Burrow, like, that whole story, the, 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 the fucking 180 that this team has done in one year is so tremendous that, like, 
it would be it would be really shitty to see them like just fall slightly short. So like for that reason, again, I'm so torn about which side I'm actually going to root for. But maybe I will just try my hardest not to root for a side and just root for a good game. Yeah. It's just gonna be hard to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna have like three drinks and then let that guy decide. <laughs> and then let that yeah. Because this guy right now can't decide, but yeah. I'm sure that guy can make all kinds of decisions. Yeah. yeah. Fun fact, you know Aaron Donald, he was a 13th round pick, 13th pick of the first round. <laughs> Uh, in 2000, 2014, yeah. the guy right before him, you know who it was? No, give us a hint. Let's play a game. Also played in his same team. Vaughn Miller? No. O- uh, oh, offensive yeah. guy. Oh. Cooper Cup? No, close. Robert Woods? No. OBJ? OBJ. Oh, okay. Damn. OBJ. Same draft. Same Damn. draft. 12, wow. 2014, 12 and 13. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Speaking of games, here's the second part of my questioning. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So, Joe Burrow will be the first second-year QB to start in the Super Bowl since this guy. Ben Roethlisberger. No. Wow. And he also won that Super Bowl. Oh, wait. Didn't Ben Roethlisberger... Okay, unless there was a guy that did it after him because it said since this guy. I thought Ben made it his second year and won. Yeah, second year and won. That's what he had. He said second year. Um, Since this guy. Yeah, so which means this guy had to have happened after After Big Big Ben. Second year. Russell Wilson? Yes. Let's go! Oh, all right. Dude, Let's go, baby. fire today. Yeah, dude. It's fucking Super Bowl juju, man. <laughs> fucking just got great vibes. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I just, I want a great game. Like, I, I don't want a disappointment. Like, yeah, like a close game is fun, but is a close game where the game ends 13 to 10 what you want? Well, does that cover the three and a half Kicking? So so what you're telling me is close game is not as important as your money yeah. hitting, right? So that's uh, the biggest variable right, too. Right, right. There's yeah, that. And yeah. then and then the close game. Yeah. Yeah. So money first. Money first. Okay. So for me, I could put in twenty five prop bets. If this is not a good football game, I honestly don't give a shit about any of that. So like I it's the biggest dance of the whole year. The whole reason we, we are like been doing this for twenty weeks. Like I would hate for it to end with like a fucking thirteen to seven. Like that would be some shit. Yeah. Like, you know, so I just think it's impossible that that would happen, to be honest. Like, I just don't see it in, like, any realm. Just be. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Like, there's two of the top seven offenses in the league, and there's two of the 15 to 18th ranked defenses in the league. That equals points. Yeah. That does not equal seven to 13, but you never know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. No, I was going to say the third part. Yeah. Part three. Okay. Shove it. Bring your A game, bro. Yeah. This one, you guys should jump on this really quickly. All right. Per PFF, blank and blank have two of the highest career postseason pass rush grades in the PFF era. Von Miller and, and Aaron Donald. Donald. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I was. I was let. I was. Yeah. I was. I was like letting you say. It's like. Yeah. I mean, dude. Man, it's just it's crazy. Didn't Von Miller win MVP the year they won the Super Bowl, or was it? Was it Peyton? Man- I thought. I mean, he created the most important play in the game. I thought he. I thought he won MVP. I don't For know. Sure. I don't know, but he should have. Yeah. Actually, he should have won MVP. I think he did. Yeah, my bet is on Von yeah, Miller. Yeah, I think he won MVP. So, like, dude, just think about the fact that we just talked about them having arguably the best player ever on the defense, and you also have like right next to him, Von, 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 Von no joke. Miller. If it wasn't for the injury, no, he would be right up there. Yeah. With oh, exactly. Donald in this conversation, this is in that defensive line's insane, and that's one thing we haven't talked about. What were you gonna say? Who's yeah. It? Well, I'm talking about the defensive line. Yeah. And then the offensive line for yeah, the Bengals. That's a huge that story gave line. nine sacks to the Titans. Titans. So, can, will that repeat? Is that what's going to happen again? I mean, that it's it could. Yeah, that this right pass rush was is way scarier than Tennessee's pass rush. It's way scarier than the Chiefs' pass rush. So, um, you know, I I worry that that could be a huge storyline yeah. for the Bengals. Yeah, and and if Jamar Chase somehow gets shut down, yeah, Jalen Ramsey. What do you do? Jam, you know what Jalen Ramsey's allowed this season? Pretty bad. He's only allowed one game over sixty receiving yards, and that wasn't even in the regular season. He has allowed nobody to get 60 or more yards in this game. And what, what do the Bengals do? They rely on like 60 yards of play yeah. to make these these winnings happen. Yeah. If if Jalen Ramsey somehow shuts down Jamar Chase, dear God, what is going to happen with the Bengals offense? I don't know. We're going to need some T. Higgins action. We need some Tyler Boyd. Joe yeah. Mixon. Joe Mixon. Um, I don't know. If Uzama probably won't play. I don't know what the word on him is. I'm sure know. that he's trying. Who the fuck wants to miss yeah. the Super Bowl? But I mean, but Sample is a serviceable tight end. Yeah. Like, it's not, you know. He's, he's like the free samples at Costco. You know, yeah. you enjoy yeah. him while it's there. They got free samples <laughs> at Walmart now. Did you guys Do know they? that? Yeah. Wow. Walmart. Did not know that. I didn't know that. Is it every day? I don't know. I went there on, what, when do we a meet weekday? up the other day? Saturday. Saturday? Oh, it was okay. yeah. it was a weekend. Yeah. Okay, okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Drew Sample. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if he's. You know, I wonder what his anytime touchdown would be because 
as a now a starting tight end. You always like tight end Plus chances. Six hundred. I I feel like it's higher. I feel like it might be in the thousands. Wow. Yeah, and and at that point, it's like, dude, you're a starting tight end. Yeah, that's that's, that's it's it's bet. worth a sprinkle. Um, yeah. So I mean, any other storylines from this game that we might have not touched on that you guys wanted to talk about? Um, some, you know, uh, superstitious kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. Teams wearing white jerseys have won 14 of the last 17 Super Bowls. Damn, who's wearing white this year? Rams. Rams, Rams home team. Yeah. yeah However, the designated home team is 23 and 32 in Super Bowls. Damn. And they've lost 11 of the last 15. How, what's the record for teams hosting Super Bowls? Want to know? And <laughs> yeah. winning them? So, 100%? 100% win rate? Yeah. If you guys want to bet, there there you go. That's I mean, what better stat than that? 100%? Yeah. <laughs> According to statistics, that <laughs> sample size. does not have enough yeah. sample yeah. size. Last year, one of the most fun bets was the the guy streaking on the field bet. Oh, I don't yeah. know what it is this year. I don't know. But Ooh, he, I, I've heard the penalties are really extensive. I I heard of this when that happened last year. So I yeah. don't know what's in play for this year. Well, the guy who actually did it also bet. And so he yeah. didn't get his winnings because yeah, it, he's stupid yeah, and he admitted yeah. it. Yeah, that's dumb as fuck. Why would yeah. you do that? But that, that might be a fun sprinkle. To yeah, do. that's a good one. I saw another one that uh, will somebody propose after winning the Super Bowl, after Super Bowl. I know we haven't really seen that, but it was like plus 500. You know, like, I don't know, young team like the Bengals win, like like Jamar J, like somebody young, just like, dude, what what better stage than after you win a Super Bowl? I think that's that's worth a sprinkle. One thing I wanted to mention for bets, you mentioned Gatorade color. Uh, I like betting on the teams right so i like blue because if the rams win i could see a blue, blue gatorade being poured because blue is one of their primary colors orange for the Bengals. so like i think the the top bets are like yellow clear for water and then there's one other one but like clear for water yeah like, oh, water or being... white yeah white oh. or clear yeah it could be white gatorade or just water um and then i think blue and like orange and shit are lower so i almost wouldn't mind sprinkling on blue and orange because those are the predominant colors, colors for both team. teams yeah so that that'd be an easy way to correlate what color gatorade they have i don't know and then over under on national anthem yeah what is it two minutes no one minute 35 seconds Ooh. i want the over who's singing by the way oh someone random i like it was honestly someone so random that i didn't even hear <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, yeah, that was like three, four seconds. I, I'm going, I'm going over. If it's if it's an R and B artist, I'm going over. If it's a rock artist, I'm going under. Damn, by genre, that's yeah. a great strat. I actually like that. Um, I'm gonna say over a minute thirty five. You're in the Super Bowl. Yeah, you you want to be out there yeah, you as long like, as possible. Yeah, I am gonna say under because okay. I think a lot of people probably have PTSD from watching people <laughs> like uh, who is it, Fergie? Uh, Fergie, Fergie, Fergie sing the Super Bowl and take like seventy minutes and have like one of the worst voices ever and become a forever uh, <laughs> laughing stock meme. I yeah. don't think many people want to be that. So I think there's a lot of pressure. So in that sense, Mickey, I'm actually gonna say Mickey Guyton, who is a country artist. Oh, I'm going under. I'm, I'm going. I, I say it's less, less than one thirty-five. Even though it's, now that it's country, yes, country's kind of we, like we need a set point to just somebody needs to sing it. Ninety-five we, seconds. Ninety-five seconds is what is one thirty-five is. So we need to see how long it takes. Should, should we just all sing it on the spot real quick? <laughs> I tried earlier. Nobody <laughs> else joined. I didn't know you wanted us. I wanted to give you your solo spotlight, man. <laughs> I I, this could be a way to fucking Let one of us it. to make it big wow. singing. Who knows? Wow. Um, like Sanjaya. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I I think maybe part of it's just you guys both took the over, so I want to take the under. But um, she seems like someone that sings like like high and low at the same time. You know, based, what I mean? based on what though? Like a little high. Uh, she, she's an R and B slash country rap, uh, rapper. What? Yeah. So uh, Mickey Guyton, right? Yeah. 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 So she, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of a. Uh, I don't know what that's called when you change the pitch yeah. like that. But uh, it, it's gonna take a, take longer for her to finish the song. Okay. Wait till the brave and the rock. Dude, the see the, these yeah. are the bets that I want to just even if it's like sprinkling really low amounts on because it's just fucking random yeah. and fun. Like, yeah. It, anthem Gatorade color. <laughs> like, will somebody streak? Like that'd be fucking. Let, fun. Let's pick a let's pick one Gatorade color. Now you have to know who's winning. Now you have yeah. To, now you have yeah. To see, that's the that's the that's why I like both. I, I mean, again, they're both like plus five hundred and plus seven hundred. So yeah. either way, I'm I'm gonna say no to orange just because orange Gatorade is. I'm gonna, I gotta do homework. Ass. I gotta I, watch. I'm do blue. I, got, I need ten years of data to make all these. <laughs> yeah. Decisions. Let's see what the last ten Gatorade colors have been, and if there's any kind of correlation. Maybe yeah. it's got that one pattern that you told me about the other day. What Fibonacci sequence? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence. sequence somehow. Who knows? It could be in that too. <laughs> this seems like a categorical. <laughs> not not a quantifiable thing, but I, I don't know. Yeah, who like loves? it's like who loves orange Gatorade? Kale loves. That's why you waste Gatorade. it. Because you 
but you still have to drink it throughout the game. Yeah, maybe. It's got to be something you want to drink, right? I don't know. I say this and it could be orange. Yeah, I don't know. It you know what? Could. I don't know. I'm going to go blue. I, I, I'm going to go I blue. Think, blue. I think the Rams are going to run the ball a lot more. <laughs> That's going to require more energy, yeah. and then they need to drink more Gatorade. So they're going to run out of their primary Gatorade. They're going to be like, whoa, where's the rest of the Gatorade? We're going to borrow the Bengals we got to borrow the Bengals Gatorade. It's going to be orange. Boom. <laughs> Could you imagine if we just watch it, all of a sudden we see like Matthew Stafford walk over. He's like, <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's done. Hey, we need you. Wow. And all of a sudden we see the guy carry the other one over, and it's wow. fucking over. That would We're, be the Yeah, greatest. if we see that, I'm immediately going to go to a laptop, <laughs> crop this part right here, <laughs> and post it on oh every my social God. media. That would be so wild. That would be so wild. Um, there's there's a couple of other bets that I like. Um, we'll just jump in because we've already been talking about yeah. it. Um, both Q quarterbacks, longest completion over 39 and a half yards. Uh, they've both just been destroying that. Stafford, 18 plays of 40 plus this year, most in the NFL. He's hit this seven of his last 10 games. Bengals allow the third most passing plays of 20 plus yards this year. So there's probably a really big chance Matthew Stafford throws the ball longer than 39 and a half yards. Uh, Joe Burrow, same exact number for same exact longest completion. He's topped this in five of his last six games. The Bengals have 16 passing plays of 40 plus yards this season. And the Rams have allowed four passing plays of 40 yards in their last four games basically one a game so that's all it takes is one so i do like both of those you guys know i'm a sucker for quarterback rushing yard props matthew stafford at five and a half i know it's a little bit higher for him but it's the super bowl it only takes one run it all it takes is one run one man-to-man coverage where everybody's like doing a deep route no one's open he's getting pressure on the edge plus 500 no, it's just it's over under oh, five and a half. Oh, yeah, see. five and a half rushing yards. So I, I'm gonna I want the over. I think I mean I don't know. I think he'd have seven yard rush. Hopefully he doesn't have to kneel at the end and lose it. But mm-hmm. um, I just love taking quarterback rushing yards. Burrow's at twelve and a half, so it worries me a little bit more. But last game he fucking ran so much. Yeah, and it's gonna be Aaron Donald. And yeah, so he might be running for his life. But I don't know if any of those running for his life, he gets sacked and somehow they consider that like a rushing attempt because he's rushing and then they give you negative yards. That's happened to me once or twice. So. Yeah. All of a sudden, when you become a runner, it like right. becomes negative. Yeah, yeah, that right? happens with Jalen. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Hurts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very often. Yeah, so that like that shit sucks. But um, those are all I have. Um, any other any other bets that you've seen show it so far? No, those are that. I mean, oh, I like the anytime for Cam Akers. I do like that. Anytime touchdown. Anytime touchdown. I don't know. If that's like a uh, yeah. a sure bet, but I just feel like the ran- both teams run the ball enough. Yeah, like they they and when they're in the red zone, I feel like they'll, they'll definitely try to give it to Acres. He's kind of proven himself. He had bad games with two fumbles, but they they've been giving them him the ball. So I like his chances of getting in, into the end zone. Yeah, I I think so too. Um, I mean, just off the top of my head, every time I think of any time touchdowns, I'm always looking at tight ends. I think Higby is always a solid option. Yeah, like you'd love Cooper Cup, obviously, but his 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 value is not. It's probably like minus two hundred. So it's like, uh, that's not worth it. But I think tight ends, Cam Akers, because they can run the ball. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. First scoring play safety is 2,500. Yeah. That would be just wild. <laughs> I mean, that, that would be wild. And even, even if it's not first scoring plays a safety for the game to have a safety is also insane odds. So like, I don't know. Sprinkle. When was the last time that happened? Was did the, I, I Von, feel like that one Miller. That, yeah. That, that wasn't a safety. That no, wasn't a I safety. feel like, uh, was it the year that the Seahawks destroyed the, uh, Broncos? Was there a safety that year? Ooh, I'm, I'm getting safety vibes. So am I for some reason. The first, one of the first plays, right? Was, uh, I think it was safety. I, I want to say yes. Of that Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right. Honestly. I don't know. But yeah, so many crazy props. That's the beauty of the Super Bowl. They just put out the stupidest things you can bet on and lose money on uh, and make a lot more money for the NFL. So uh, that's, you know, that's that's the nature of the beast, I guess. But uh, let's kick it into my last game. We'll jump into the final segment, my last game. Uh, we were doing random playoff players up until this point, but because it is Super Bowl, let's just do random Super Bowl players. So this helps narrow the, this helps narrow the uh, what's scope, scope a lot, yeah. which means... You guys will only get one guess. Okay. Whoa. One guess and one guess only because it's two fucking teams, right? So uh, it's very, very narrowed. Think very critically about yours. And the beauty of this is there are three of them. So it's a best two out of three situation or somebody wants to sweep, you know, go for the sweep. Okay. You guys ready for this? I think so. Are you sure? Do you need a minute? No. I got this. <laughs> if, if you said the winner gets $5,000, then I would need a minute. Damn. <laughs> the winner just, gets bragging rights. I'm, I'm like over here. All right, let's see what I got here. <laughs> the winner gets my COVID vaccine card. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go. I'll, I'll jump into the first one. So I got three of these. Um, I have listed six clues per person, right? So we'll start with the first one. Okay. Again, this is either a Cincinnati Bengal or an LA Ram. Six cents. Here we go. This random Super Bowl performer drafted in the fifth round of the 2019 draft 
by a team who currently isn't in the Super Bowl. This random playoff performer, I guess Super Bowl performer, played college football at the University of Utah. They are currently 27 years old. And What are you typing there? All his questions. All his hints. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this, <laughs> savage. Uh, 27 years old, played college football at Utah, and was a pro bowler this year. This random Super Bowl performer was a two-sport athlete in college. You guys ready? You guys going to need to be quick. I just got one guess, though. Yeah, going to need to be quick because this is the last hint. He led his team in college in 2014 in goals scored and was also on the U.S. under-17 national Mc soccer team. Pearson. Wrong. Oh, man. Oh, Shove it, no. bro. Shove it. Hold oh, on. Oh, my God. This is crazy. He's a Rams kicker, uh, obviously. <sighs> no way. I can't remember. No wow, way. this will be the biggest choke of all time, man. Yeah. I literally said his name like 30 seconds ago, maybe. Damn. I don't remember. I'm going to pass. Does that come back to me? Yeah, I guess so. Gay? <laughs> Matt Gay is the answer. Damn, show Damn. Damn. That's tough, man. It was right in your lap, bro. It was. It was. Bang. Wow. Right in your lap. I even got the ball first in overtime. Yeah. And I just screwed it up. <laughs> I'm going to need you to study your kickers in the offseason. I think there. I do. Yep. Super Bowl kicker. Matt Gay was the first one. Here we go. Number two. This random Super Bowl performer drafted in the second round in 2018. Oh, wow. Originally committed to play for Toledo, but ended up playing college football at Wake Forest. This random Super Bowl performer ran a 4-5 40-yard dash. 4-5. That's kind of fast. This random Super Bowl performer is the third of his name in his family. Joe Mixon. <laughs> wow, that's a great guess, but that is wrong. <laughs> Damn it, it was it's Joe. It's back to show me. <laughs> He's a third. Yeah, you, there's, oh. more, there's more hints. Well, I mean. Oh, I mean, unless you want to guess. Yeah, I mean, isn't OBJ the third? OBJ? Wrong. I don't know why the fuck it's, you wouldn't have just I know waited who it is. for the last I know hint. who it is. Hold on, let me just say. I don't even You had it. a free hint. I don't know why you fucking guessed. That makes no sense, show it. Coming into the league, he compared himself to the great Rod Woodson. Don't guess yet. Dang it. Team he I was know. most excited to face coming into the NFL was the Pittsburgh Steelers because of the rivalry based on the team he was drafted by. Give me the answer, please. Jesse Bates. Yes, you are correct. Dude, God third, damn. third of his name, I didn't even think about that yeah. it would actually be like, I, would, I just went for like common names like yeah. Joe. Jesse Bates the third. Here we go. Number three. Random Super Bowl performer drafted in the fourth round of 2017 by a team, again, not currently in the Super Bowl. Dang. This random Super Bowl performer was born in Jackson, Alabama, but went to high school in Texas and went to college at Oklahoma. This random Super Bowl performer ran a 465 mm. 40 yard dash. This random Super Bowl performer is known to have freakish strength, could outbent. Oh, I just, oh, I think you guys can still hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because it just messed up, but you're good. This random Super Bowl performer is known to have freakish strength, was known in college to outbench, squat, and power clean. Aaron Donald? Wrong. More than anyone else on the team in Oklahoma. Two more guests, or there's two more hints. This random Super Bowl performer has a cousin who currently plays for the New York Jets. Last hint, this random Super Bowl performer still holds the college football record for most rushing yards in a single game that he set in 2014 as a true freshman against Kansas Running for 427 yards. That's the last 14? hint. 14? And he's strong? <laughs> Do you know who it is? I mean, I want to say who I want to say that I've said. So Do you want to hear the hints again? I think I got the hints. Okay. I, the first couple of hints won't even help me because I'm not going to know, like, you know, college yeah. stuff. Yep. Um, but Wake Forest? 
No, o- Oklahoma. That, Oklahoma. Oh, yeah, that was last guess. Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma, very strong. He's got a cousin in New York. That's the one that I... Cousin really... that plays in the NFL for the New York Jets. Yeah. Same last name. Hmm. And he's just... He's got to be a lineman or a tight end. Hmm. It's not Uzoma. <laughs> Uzma. Um, but it's got to be... This is rushing yards, right? Yeah. The, yeah, he broke this single game, and he holds the record right now in college football for the most Oklahoma. rushing yards. It's got to be. At Oklahoma, it's gotta be. 427 yards Jeez. against Kansas. Okay, well, it's not Cam Akers. Nope, it's not Sonny Michelle. Could be Henderson, but is he that strong? <sighs> okay, I'm just going to call an audible. Wait, no, Joe Mixon's way younger. <laughs> I love this game. I love um, this game. Okay, I'm gonna rule out Joe Mixon. If it is Joe Mixon, end the game. Joe Mixon went to Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but just, ma- just but, making sure. But it was 2014, right? Yeah, so that's yeah, just, just making sure. All right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna just. Dude, I feel like you guys are just on the spot and not thinking. Because when I say it, you're gonna be like, "What the fuck." On the spot, but not thinking. Because you've, you, you, it's just process of elimination, and you've been doing that, but you just stopped all of a sudden. Mm. So you said it's not like so many people, but you you just stopped. Oh all my of a god, is it Samaji P Ryan? Samaji P Ryan is the correct answer. <laughs> Freaking cousin in New York, La Michael P Ryan, baby, let's go, dude. He holds Dang. the record for most wow. rushing yards in one game, four hundred and twenty-seven. Wow, you need to go watch that highlight. You know what's crazy about that? The week before that, Melvin Gordon broke, broke. the record wow. for most rushing yards in a single game in college football history against the Nebraska Huskers, running for 425 yards. And literally a week later, Samaje runs for two more yards. Poor Melvin. He just gets kicked yeah. out of <laughs> everything. Breaks the record, but it only lasts one week, bro. Just wild. Um, yes, Samaje P. Ryan was the answer. Congrats. That was fucking fun. Um, yeah. Can't believe I didn't get Matt Gay. Dude, yeah. I mean, it was on a silver platter there, yeah. but yeah. it is what it is. It happens. Um, that's the beauty of football and games. You know, anything can happen. Just like this Super Bowl, anything can happen. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll change my mind another hundred times before now and the time this game starts on what I really, really think is going to happen. Um, but like you said, at the end of the day, I just want a really, really good football game. Um, I just want to see both Green teams stuff. actually like come to play. I don't want to see like one team just look like they don't belong. Like, I don't want to see any of that shit. Um, I just want to see two teams fucking just laid out all out there and, and give us an ending to arguably the craziest football season that we've ever witnessed. And one of the craziest playoffs and, you know, a two match, like a matchup in the Super Bowl that was one of the most improbable matchups heading into the season that we may have ever seen. So, um, nonetheless, I want a missed field goal caught return for a touchdown. What's the problem? Oh, to end the game, holy shit, plus <laughs> like five million. <laughs> That's got to be the last play, holy shit. But no, yeah, I bet if you just even bet on a missed field goal return for a touchdown, special teams touchdowns, probably really good odds. Yeah. Um, also, uh, a great halftime show, right? We got Snoop Dogg. Yeah, it's Dr. like Dre, it's Eminem. like literally taking us all back to like the early two thousands. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah late nineties even. Yeah, That's yeah, wild. late nineties, early two thousands. You know, so. Snoop Dogg's son played football at UCLA, and he just chose one day. He was just like, I don't want to play no more. What's his name? Something Dog. Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Dog, <laughs> dog the second. <laughs> Snoopy dog? I don't know. Fuck. Yeah, Snoop anyway. dog junior? Yeah. That'd be funny. But uh, yeah, guys. So again, it's going to be freaking exciting. Yeah. We hope you guys enjoyed the Super Bowl. I uh, hope you guys you know, eat a shit ton of good food because that's what the Super Bowl is all about. Uh, drink a lot of alcohol maybe. You know, Do a lot of other things that maybe you enjoy doing. But hopefully we get a great game and you know, hopefully we win a lot of money and get to watch a lot of good football and... Um, you know, wraps the season up in like a perfectly tight knit bow on a one of the most improbable and unpredictable seasons we've ever witnessed. So um, we'll be back probably to recap this uh, on Monday or Tuesday, depending on scheduling. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're the only playbook. Enjoy your Super Bowl. We'll see you guys next time. Mm-hmm.